Hello, everyone, and welcome to CFS Plus. Um, thanks to everyone from joining around the world. My name is Amina Razvi. I'm the executive director of the Sustainable Apparel Coalition, and it's great to be here. I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Kate Heine, to chat about standardizing sustainability and collaborating across the industry for impact. Kate, great to chat with you, as always. Hi, Amina. Um, really happy to be here and get to spend the next 30 minutes with you as well. So thank you. Um, as you said, I'm Kate Heine, and I lead the sustainability work at Zalando. Great. We have a lot to chat about, so let's get started. Uh, 2020 has been quite a year. We've heard throughout sessions at CFS Plus how this is a real pivotal moment for the industry. The crisis has accelerated systemic problems within the industry and has raised awareness for sustainability among consumers and stakeholders. Customers are really looking to better understand what the brands that they buy from are doing with regards to people and the planet. They're increasingly asking more questions about sustainability and they tell companies that it can be difficult and confusing to understand what sustainability and performance really means due to hundreds of certificates, labels, and initiatives that are on the global market. And that's why the SAC was founded and the Higindex created to standardize sustainability measurement and performance so that ultimately consumers can make more informed decisions about their purchases based on trusted, credible, and comparable data. The Higg Index gives brands, retailers, and manufacturers a common standard, a global one, to assess social and environmental impacts of their supply chains and their products, such as water use, carbon emissions, and labor conditions. And it helps them to identify opportunities for improvement. For those who might be less familiar with the Higg Index, it includes a core set of five tools, facility and product tools, as well as the Higg Brand and Retail Module, or the Higg BRM which launched in March and provides brands and retailers with a comprehensive way to assess and communicate their social and environmental performance. The HIG BRM helps companies to understand their performance across 11 environmental and 16 social impact areas and allows them to measure progress as they improve year over year. It provides a way to credibly track, measure and drive impact reduction and point to opportunities for improvement. It also allows companies to share their sustainability progress with value chain partners, with consumers, with customers, investors, and stakeholders. Given the urgency and the scope of the challenges that we face, we need to reduce redundancy and the industry needs to scale the use of these standardized tools, which when used globally, will help to drive collective action and accelerate transparency efforts. If we want to address customer demand and support a shift towards more sustainable purchasing, it's clear that the industry needs to speak in one voice and avoid confusion for both brands and customers. Kate, at Zalando, you guys have launched an impressive sustainability strategy, establishing yourselves as real leaders in the industry, and you've made a bold commitment to leveraging the HIG Index as an integral part of your strategy. In fact, you're the first retailer to make the HIG BRM a requirement for the brands that you sell on your platform. What motivates you guys to take a leadership position like this? Well, I'm gonna, I think that's a, a great question to start on. Um, as Europe's leading destination for fashion, we as Zalando want to leverage the role that we play there and play within the industry in order to reduce confusion and create transparency for our customers so that we can enable them as well as us to make more sustainable choices moving forward. We're committed to working closely with our partner brands and to continuously raise the bar by pushing for better social and environmental standards like you just listed. So that's why with the launch of our Do More strategy um, last October, and then more recently, we made our, uh, or we made sustainability assessments, uh, ethical and um, sustainability kind of environmental parameters for our brand partners mandatory. And by 2023, we will only work with partners who align with our ethical standards. We implemented the brand assessment on the basis of the HIG brand and retail module, the BRM, and I know we'll talk mostly about that, uh, to assess the sustainability efforts of our own footprint, but also those of our partner brands as well. Because our vision at Zalando is to be a sustainable fashion platform with a net positive impact for people on the planet. And we, are, we see our partnership with the SAC as key to driving our strategy. 
That's amazing. Um, and it's so great to see all the work that I know that you guys have done and, and put into getting to this point. When you leverage the HIG BRM, ultimately, you know, what do you hope that it's going to achieve not only for Zalando as a company, but also for the brand partners that you're engaging with on this journey? Well, for the first time, and again, you mentioned this, but I, I think I will strive to make this clear repeatedly throughout this, <laughs> this time, is that this will be the first time that we have comparable sustainability data at a brand level in order to understand where our partners are with regards to sustainability performance. The next steps will be to identify the areas where we're struggling as an industry in order to drive collective action and impact. But first we need comparable data in order to make any of those moves. So ultimately we wanted to make this information visible for our customers who are already asking for this type of information. Uh, as you probably know, and I know Amina, you know, that we already highlight sustainability information to our customers at a product level through the sustainability flag, but that focuses specifically on sustainable materials or processing techniques. So we have a dedicated digital experience sustainability team that is testing ways to show more types of sustainability information to our customers because our customers are also saying that they want brand level information. But that information needs to be easy to understand and comparable in order to help our customers make informed decisions that they say they want to be making. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you and I have both taken a look at the HIG BRM. We know it you know, well, um, and it's not necessarily an easy lift for companies. So you know, tell us a little bit about how have your brand partners responded? You know, this is a, it's a big commitment. You're asking a lot of them. So, you know, what's been the response so far? You're right. <laughs> it's, so overwhelmingly, the response has been positive. So we see that across the board from both sustainability experts, but also to the commercial teams within these brands. And everyone agrees that they see the value um, and they're willing to work together on this. But like you said, it's also not a small questionnaire. <laughs> I mean, sustainability is complicated. This covers a lot of ground. So it's not a small questionnaire and the implementation won't happen overnight. Uh, and the concerns that we have heard um, have been around timelines and how our partners can get support in order to ensure that they are successful in completing the questionnaire. Especially right now, as we know this year, as you mentioned, but as we're all very clear on, this year has been challenging um, with the coronavirus crisis. So that adds a, an added complexity in terms of successful completion. Um, but we're providing specific guidance and training, um, and we're expecting brands to show improvement on a year over year basis. Of course, Zalando has also um, filled out the questionnaire for our own labels. Um, and this is a huge journey for all of us. It's not something that we are pushing off just for our brand partners. It's also something that we are doing. Um, and it will be an obligation for any brand that sells on Zalando. Any brand that refuses to engage in these initiatives will ultimately be delisted from the platform um, because with this, we're willing to take short-term loss for long-term gain since we believe that our commitment to sustainability promises to be a source of competitive advantage, both for us and for our partners within the industry. Yeah, it, it's definitely um, a bold leadership stance that you guys have taken. You know, the the SEC was really rooted in pre-competitive collaboration. And over the past 10 years, you know, we've worked with, um, with all of our member companies to develop the Higginex methodology. And it's really been about how do you help companies embark on this journey, as you mentioned, right? Like starting someplace and moving forward, um, while also really maintaining strong business relationships and increasing that engagement, you know, across their value chain. Uh, but for those companies who haven't started, it, it isn't always easy, right? So what advice, you know, um, are you guys giving to your brand partners or would you give to other brands out there that are really new to the sustainability journey and are just getting started? You know, how do they leverage tools like the Hig Index to, to really just start this journey? Well, <laughs> um, first off, you can't improve what you don't measure. I think that's, that's an adage that we all know, right? We all know that really well, but you can't. 
I mean, just because we know it doesn't mean it's, it's not correct. So you can't improve what you don't measure. So fill out the BRM because it will help evaluate your brand sustainability performance and show where improvements need to be made. And it will do it in a way that again, allows you to comp or compare or have comparable information um, across your competitors or perhaps brands within the same portfolio that you're in. So you can't measure or you can't improve what you don't measure. Fill out the BRM because it will help you understand what those measurements are in your performance. And cliche but true, again, it's a journey and no brand is perfect. So I say that in this context because again, first time we've had comparable data, we're just starting, but we have to start somewhere. And so we all see this as a journey. And when we talk about that with our partners, I think that really helps us all to share that knowledge and understand that this is a long-term commitment that will help your business in creating value. And the more brands that use the tool, the more we can continue to involve and improve them because there is a feedback loop that helps to improve that. Um, it's designed that way. And that is how we can drive collective impact and action. So please yeah. join. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I'll do a sales pitch for you, Amina. Oh, thank you, Kate. It makes my job a lot easier. <laughs> Um, you know, you, you've talked about this a couple of times, but I think it's so important, right, where the HIG BRM for the first time is going to allow for this industry-wide comparable data to be collected, you know, at a global scale. It's, uh, it's available for you guys as a retailer to really look at your portfolios, you know, for individual brands, etc. But I want to kind of click into that a little bit to talk about why data comparability is so important for transformation across the industry, right? You know, the, the crisis hit and we've all realized that we need to fundamentally change how things are done. Um, and why, I just want to kind of click into why having that comparable data as a starting point is so important for the kind of transformation we're really seeking. I think I'll answer this in a couple of ways, actually. So something that we haven't really talked a lot about yet is our customer. And our customer, over 34 million of them, are asking for um, information about brands. And, and sort of the saying that we've, we've seen and I, we repeat is, I don't wanna buy a good product from a bad brand. Well, as a, as a platform that carries over 2,500 brands, how are we supposed to provide that information? Um, because I cannot stress this enough, we need comparable data. So there's, there's the need for us as a, as a company, but we're doing this on behalf of our customers. So let's not lose sight of the fact that our customers um, are making choices to purchase more sustainable products and they want to do that from more sustainable brands and companies. So we need comparable data and specifically in this conversation, we need it at a brand level. So for us and for our partner brands, in order to identify improvement areas and work on solutions collaboratively. The SAC is an independent and globally structured organization that's positioned to drive the necessary change in the fashion industry. So that's why we partner with you. That's why you know we're aligned on this. And that's um, why we've been doing this for the past, at least Zalando for three years, but also you've been, you've been harder at, at work on this for a little bit longer. Um, but in order to standardize sustainability communication and data, data comparability, to reduce confusion, to create greater transparency, and to enable both customers and businesses to make the more sustainable choices moving forward. So again, our customers are asking us for this we need to make changes ourselves and our partners and we can only do that collectively if we have the the comparable data to do so yeah absolutely i couldn't agree more um we have a couple of minutes before we get to to q a but i want to kind of build on that last point you made right about this really collaborating across the value chain to to drive systemic change you know we have 10 years left um, to really start to address some of the, the most pressing issues that we face, whether it's around climate, social labor issues, et cetera. Um, and we can only really do those if we work together at a global scale. So can we click up a little bit and talk about why collaboration 
at that level and that scale is really necessary and the imperative for that right now. Yeah, I mean, you just said it, we don't have time. We, you know, 10 years is probably even uh, generous, right? So we have to work together at a global scale. And I, I mean, I just feel like a broken record, but this is an established global standard for fashion brands and retailers in order to measure and talk about our performance. We need industry alignment and collaboration. And I think we have a lot of that through the SAC and the efforts that are being driven um, through the work that you lead. So we need to speak with one language towards customers, more retailers. We would ask more and more retailers or platforms to start using this tool for your third party assessments as well. Um, but the apparel industry is a significant contributor, like you mentioned, to environmental and social impacts. And brands in particular must take bold leadership in order to achieve meaningful improvements in the industry. We have to do it together. So we clearly see that we cannot wait for uh, regulator requirements and we need to act now and we need to scale our available solutions globally. Well said, I couldn't have said it better. Um, I know that you and I could probably talk about yeah. this for a while, for sure, which we have uh, at length, um, but we also wanna make sure that we take some time to address questions from the audience. Our teams have been collecting questions over the course of our discussion. So we wanna dive into um, some of those questions right now. Um, one of the questions I wanna start with is around technology and data. So how do you believe technology and data can really help fashion retailers and brands be more sustainable? Absolutely. Well, um, you know, I think it's pretty clear that we live in a digital world um, and we see digitization continuing to grow, especially now as we are increasingly connecting with one another from remote locations. So across the world almost, um, but moving forward, the apparel industry will increasingly rely on technology, innovation, data. Fashion retailers are often um, in a great position to actually pilot and scale these efforts. Um, so yes, I think that um, this technology and data can help us. Um, and the BRM is our way of gathering that data right now. Yeah, absolutely. Another question has come in around um, brands encouraging value chain partners to collaborate on sustainability initiatives. You know, prior to your work at Zalando, you know, you worked at another uh, another big brand and so much of the work that you and I have both done is around how do we actually partner across the value chain to to really collaborate on sustainable uh, sustainability initiatives. So um, from all of your roles, what would you say are, you know, what are the ways in which to engage, partner, and really collaborate more deeply that are necessary right now? Well, I think something you said actually in, in your opening around pre-competitive um, work there's so much to be done. You know, this does not, there's so much that we have to align on and actually work together on before we even get to a point of competition. So I think um, what I, I just sort of kind of continue to double down on encouraging us to measure for the first time in order to have the ability to have discussions and in a common language and compare ourselves. I mean, having the tool of the BRM really helps us to do that. The SAC clearly provides um, a few different options of tools, um, but I'd also be curious if you've heard of other examples or anything that, I mean, just, <laughs> I know you're running the Q&A, but if, <laughs> if you, yeah. you interact with a lot more than even I do. So if you have other ideas or suggestions. Yeah, you know, I want to build on that point that you made around um, having that co those common tools and those standards really being a starting point for conversations. You know, for a lot of the member companies that we engage with, these tools actually help them to do that, right? They help them to engage with their not only, you know, customers, with their supply chain partners, but to really say, this is what we're seeing, right? Um, yeah. This is kind of where things are landing. How do we then use that as a jumping off point for a conversation around how we improve performance and how we do that together. So, you know, when you think about 
the HIG facility tools or the HIG BRM tools, you know, they can also be tools to really drive increased uh, engagement, to drive equal partnership, to drive greater collaboration, and to come up with solutions that ultimately benefit the entire value chain. Um, so I think that those are really important. Have you know, starting off with a common common language is key, but then using that to build off of to deepen those conversations and those collaborations of, about really driving uh, improved performance. Um, another question that we've gotten is is pretty interesting around is profit is profitability a key barrier for sustainable fashion uh, always an interesting one when we talk about you know what does it take what does it cost you know is sustainability profitable but would love to hear your thoughts on that i guess i'd point to customers for this one right so I mean, profitability is kind of the key here is what are our customers, what are our customers telling us? And as Zalando, our sustainability ambitions um, will help us to stay ahead of customer demand. Both our current and our future customer base are calling for more sustainable fashion choices. Um, we know that nine out of 10 Gen Z co consumers uh, believe that companies have a responsibility to address environmental and social issues and we believe that by committing to sustainability, we can secure our long-term growth, stay relevant with our customers and establish market leading differentiation against our competitors. So we, we fundamentally um, see this as the future of our business model and we don't separate out the sort of commercial success from sustainability success. Yeah, no, it's a great- that, that the winners in the future will, you know, be sustainable organizations. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I think that even from what we're seeing, um, you know, ac across our member companies, you know, those companies that are really doubling down uh, on sustainability efforts are, are the ones who are making progress, um, you know, who are, I think, ultimately going to be resilient as we come out of the crisis. So it's, it's a great point. Um, one of the questions coming in is around minimum standards. You know, have you guys really thought about uh, not one, you know, moving beyond just requiring it to saying, okay, well, the brands that we sell on our platform need to meet some minimum standards or thresholds. Um, and, you know, will you guys disclose those eventually, or have you even gotten that far? <laughs> Thanks for that last part. We have not gotten that far. <laughs> so as, as you said, as we all know, this yeah. is brand new. So we just, um, we just launched uh, the use of the BRM this year. It's our first year. And so it's really about understanding where our partners are with regard to sustainability performance, being able to identify the areas where we're struggling as an industry, but also specific, um, specific partners perhaps. And it's in order to leverage our position as a platform, then we will be able to focus on collective action and impact. So, um, let's see, it's October. So just this past month, we received our first kind of round of, of data coming in from the first cohort of brands um, that include partners like Nike, VF Corp and uh, PBH. And we will assess and analyze that first batch of data this month and next. So our aim is absolutely to scale this, um, this standard, this tool and take the lead um, on uh, ahead of future regulatory frameworks that might might come to bear, um, like I said, in order to drive impact. So brands that don't engage on this uh, or fail to show progress, we will not work with. We will only work with brands that align with our standards in this space. And so um, I won't repeat everything I just said, but <laughs> you know, I think in terms of uh, disclosure of the HIG, um, not necessarily the, the results, but the HIG data and information. Um, and I don't know if maybe you want to say um, something about that from the SAC perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. In terms of our transparency efforts, you know, it, it is something that the SAC, it's been a core part of our work. Uh, actually, there's going to be a session tomorrow at CFS Plus around um, transparency and where transparency is headed. But this is definitely on our roadmap to, by 2021, be able to, to start uh, communicating around, you know, performance um, and looking at it from a, from a high level industry perspective and to be able to allow companies to communicate 
communicate their performance as well. So, you know, we've talked about the importance of transparency. It, it's clear that we need to move in that direction and we're working really hard with all of our member companies to, to activate that. Um, we have a, just a, another minute, probably maybe time for one more question that's come in. I think it's probably for both of us, but, you know, we alluded earlier to the fact that this is not a small questionnaire. Um, you know, the, the companies that you mentioned that have already completed it are pretty big ones, right? So I guess it'd be great to hear from your perspective, you know, is this, is this really a tool for all for companies of all sizes to be able to leverage. And, you know, with all of the brands that you sell, I'd be curious to hear what some of the smaller companies, you know, how how they have found their engagement with it, um, you know, as we move forward. Yeah, it's, you're right. It is probably a question for both of us. I mean, you're right. Uh, the ones I listed are, are fairly large. Um, and we have had positive like I said, positive responses overall. So for the, the breadth of the partners that we've identified, um, I think that in terms of the smaller organizations, um, right now what we're hearing the most is how can we best support them? And what, what are the, you know, what is the training or what are the tools of support that they can have in order um, to be able to fill this out and to be able to get some actionable data um, that's really our, uh, we need to work together kind of across, across the different ecosystem to help everyone be able to uh, fill out the questionnaire and then access and use the data as well. Yeah. And, and I might just build on that with, you know, you mentioned this at the beginning that like these these tools are always evolving, right? And a, a really important part of this is feedback. You know, we did create these tools to ensure that companies of all sizes could really dig into it, but we know that they need to evolve and we need to continue to make sure we're getting that feedback so that we can support companies to actually, in, you know, enter their information, but also to evolve the tool to meet user needs. So um, it's a work in progress as always. Um, so we have so, um, so many more questions coming in and I wish we could, could answer them all, but we have just a few minutes to wrap up. And as we wrap up today's session, Kate, what would you say are, are two of your kind of key takeaways and, and, you know, kind of your call to action for other brands and retailers out there? Well, I guess first and foremost is I think this point about um, not waiting for regulation or to be enforced or to be um, have have another hand kind of tell us what to do. We need to take action, um, and we need to do it now. That's you know that's you mentioned ten years. I think we we both agreed that's probably not. Uh, we don't have that much time. So we can't wait for regulation. We need to take some uh, bold action now is the first point. Uh, second, um, and this is really around the collective impact, we need to speak to customers in one language. So again, comparability, one language, reduce confusion, create transparency. Um, we need to be able to align around this so that we're sharing the same messages so that people understand them so that we can have the collective impact and improvement that we all want. Amina, what are your two? <laughs> um, for me, you know, I think we've talked about this a lot, but really it's about scaling these standardized tools. You know, we have tools um, that can be used right now and deployed. And so, and we don't have time to make, to wait. We both agree on that, right? The, we know that the the tools aren't perfect. They're going to continue to evolve, but I think it's really important to get started, um, to get started wherever companies are at with their journey, um, and then to really scale the use of these tools across the industry. If we have all companies leveraging a similar set of tools with similar standards, we can actually start to use that information to drive real reduction of impact. And that's that's the point here, right? Like that's what we're all trying to get to. So I think it's so important. And without that scale, you know, we're not going to be able to do that. So those are my two key takeaways. And I think uh, Kate, you and I would both agree that that our call to action is that we want to make sure that everyone's using the HIG brand and retail module and other standard tools like this to really, really drive the industry forward. Um, with that, I want to say thank you so much for joining thank me. Thank you. It's cool. It's always a pleasure to talk and to, to thank Global Fashion Agenda for the platform to talk about this and to everyone joining us today. Uh, thank you for all your questions uh, and thank you very much for, for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Thank you everyone and Amina, thanks for uh, leading a great session. Really appreciate it. All right, take care everyone. Bye.